C'est parti. Oui, oui. Okay, so I guess we can start now. Um, well, hello everyone. It's a real pleasure being here. Thanks for uh, having us today. During the next 30 minutes, we will be discussing upgrades in general and upgrades in OpenStack. I'm Sebastian and I work for Innovance. Innovance is a multi-cloud provider. So we basically run, design, build cloud platforms. We have several domains of expertise, among others, OpenStack and Ceph. At Innovance, I'm mainly involved in the development team, but I also rotate between the operational and the pre-sale team. So, Frédéric? Yeah. So I'm Frédéric Lapier. I'm in charge of the uh, software development team. So, that's it. And I'm uh, Media Bakouk. I'm an uh, OpenStack developer on a slow meter. Okay. Um, so these are our details. Um, so let's, let's start with the problem that we faced uh, during upgrade procedures. Um, so this is basically what we got when we have like uh, newcomers at Innovance. It's uh, always really difficult to make them understand that we have really specific and really strict rules to, to manage and to operate the platform. So we established the, some key principles. So we never ever log into a server. You use a distributed log to, uh, to log in into every server, so you don't even need to SSH into one instance. And if you want to perform any actions, you can just use softwares like Capistrano or Funk or M Collective. You don't install any packages on the system because at some point, if everyone started to do apt-get install something, well, uh, this brings non-consistency to your platform. So this is something that you definitely want to avoid. You don't edit manual conf manually edit the configuration files just because everything is centralized and everything is managed by Puppet and Git. So if you want to modify a configuration file, you just edit everything <coughs> on the Puppet master and then you just run M collective for example to upgrade all the nodes. So that's the way to do it. And then Puppet will restart all the daemon afterwards. In order to proceed to the upgrades, you need something really fundamental and like a redundant platform. So if you don't have any redundancy in your platform, you can't, this is a really basic thing, but you don't, can't proceed to your upgrades. So either you can have an active active setup using a load balancer, which is something really common now. You have an HA proxy and then you have API nodes that you, and you just load balance all the requests. Or either you have an active passive setup. It's basically something running pacemaker and chorusing. So one node is active at a time and the other one is passive. And if something goes, goes wrong, well, you just fade over to the other one. Databases must be replicated. So you have several options for this. You can use Galera or MongoDB, depending on the technology. So for OpenStack databases, you can use Galera. And for the MongoDB, you can use like for, for Cinometer databases. It's highly recommended to, to use MongoDB. Uh, it's really important to have databases replic replicated because uh, as soon as you proceed to the upgrade, you want the, the, the changes reflected on every server. You want the upgrade to be propagated. So. And you definitely some, want something to roll back. And um, in our infrastructure, the way we do it is that we basically ship servers with all the software installed. So this is fairly easy then to proceed to rollback operations. So let's say you, you just boot a new server and you bootstrap it and you have all the packages installed and then you want to proceed to the upgrade and something went wrong and you can fairly easily roll back to the previous version. So well, even with a good QA system, you problem might rise, so that's uh, something that you might consider as well. And this is why we build such facilities and uh, a tool at Innovance just to make update easier. And that's the tool that uh, Fred is going to explain to you. That's our solution and that's the way we do it at Innovance. So it's uh, one of the answers that we give, but it's not like the, everyone's answer maybe, but this is how we proceed if, uh, to the upgrades at uh, Innovance. I'll leave the floor to Fred. Okay. Thank you. 
So the, the important thing when you want to be able to do rollbacks is to be able to, is you need to stop using Puppet to install packages because if you install packages using Puppet, it's very difficult to, to go back, to go uh, reverse and to go to the previous point. <coughs> so the idea is to um, separate uh, what you do with Puppet and what you do with uh, your installation uh, process. So the idea is to let Puppet uh, do what he is doing well. So what he's doing well is to uh, manage your configuration files, restart your services, and uh, only do this uh, kind of stuff. That's very important because if you let him manage uh, packages, it, it will be very hard for you to, uh, to go back. Okay. So what, what we designed, it's a tool called eDeploy. You can find it on GitHub. It's a tool to, um, to manage updates and also to manage the installation. I will only talk uh, on this presentation about updates. Uh, the idea is to change the abstraction level, to n stop work, working at the uh, package level, but to work at the whole uh, system installation level to be able to, to do some operation at the system level. <clears throat> and so we, uh, we separate the, um, the system uh, we want to install in two subtrees, in two uh, kind of subtrees. Uh, one is the data, so what, uh, what is changed on the system could be con configuration files, could be uh, your database, uh, could be uh, your logs, etc. So this part uh, we will not touch it during the upgrades. And the rest of the system, that means the programs, the libraries, and all the uh, Python codes on OpenStack uh, will be updated during the upgrade process. Uh, so you have example here, of, uh, what is in uh, varlib, uh, MySQL, varlog, etc. Will, will not be touched during the upgrade processes. Okay. <coughs> so the idea uh, is that we, you prepare with these tools, uh, you deploy the, your tree uh, in advance, uh, to prepare your updates. And um, depending on what operating system you are using, uh, you can be uh, prepared using uh, Dev Bootstrap or Yum, <coughs> and some kind of CH root uh, magic. Uh, so you prepare everything in advance. You can do some uh, computation between your tree, uh, between your upgrades, and to see uh, what has changed, what we need to be uh, restarted. So you, you can prepare everything. The installation is, d is done in uh, three parts, just to, to remind a little bit wh what eDeploy is doing. It does a hardware detection on the system, uh, send the hardware back to the server, installation server, and then the installation server send back a configuration script that is run, and then the whole tree uh, that was prepared in advance is installed on the system. So that's a very effective way of installing. And for the update, we use the same trees on the server, the installation server, that is used uh, using AirSync. So very efficiently, you copy the trees, uh, your updated trees to your system you want to update. Uh, so for example, let's say we have uh, Apache you want to update because there is a security alert or whatever. And only the Apache uh, part of the system will be, uh, uh, will be uh, synchronized on top of the network. And then you have some scripts to stop the Apache service, ersync the, the Apache uh, part of the system, and restart the Apache, for example, if you have an Apache app. Uh, update to, to proceed. <coughs> so, so the idea is you can define what you do by software um, roles, uh, meaning you have, uh, I don't know, your OpenStack uh, compute roles, your OpenStack uh, management role, your OpenStack object server role, all is prepared in advance, <coughs> so that's very important. And then you associate uh, this role to uh, hardware profiles. So that's how <coughs> the installation is done. What is very important is that you can uh, store these roles uh, for uh, whatever time you want. Say in two years you want to reproduce something that you have installed in the past, you will be able to reinstall it very easily. No, no problem to install uh, the same thing because you don't have to, to manage the uh, distribu Linux distribution repositories, you don't have to, uh, to, f to store everything to be able to reinstall something. You just store your image and you reinstall it what, whenever you want. Okay? 
And so with this principle in place, you can also go to one version to another version uh, very easily. And if you have some trouble, you can airsync back the, the oldest version very easily. Okay. And so we, we design also the tool uh, to be very uh, simple to use, but <coughs> powerful. So it's only concentrating on the update process and installation process and very uh, effective because it's only managing uh, updates uh, by using AirSync. So only the minimal uh, set of files are copied uh, on top of the network. <coughs> and so what is very important when you, uh, you do uh, updates and you manage uh, your upgrades is to be able to test. And with this process, we test everything in a continuous integration way. Uh, we use uh, Jenkins to be able to reproduce what is uh, deployed in production. And that's a very important uh, point that uh, we, we need to emphasize because <coughs> that's uh, how we can be uh, the most, <laughs> most assured that everything will be OK after uh, upgrades. So the, the key principle is that we version everything. So we version the whole uh, installation system. We version the Jenkins job. We, we are using the same uh, process than in the uh, OpenStack uh, continuous integration system, the Jenkins uh, job builder uh, system to be able to version even the, uh, the Jenkins uh, configuration. Uh, we version, obviously, uh, the Puppet modules and manifest. Uh, and uh, also the uh, e-deploy system, I already uh, discussed about this, but the Ansible recipes, that's more for the orchestration of all, how you update all the roles. Uh, Mehdi will discuss a little bit after about this. How you update, uh, in which order you update all the components and how you will be able to, uh, to be uh, successful at the end. We have still a running system while you update. <coughs> so, with all this in place, what you get is a, a process that is reproducible because uh, you can test it uh, uh, as, as, as much as you want. Uh, it's completely automated. It's completely uh, automated because of the versioning of the uh, continuous integration uh, <coughs> process. And obviously, at the end, it's testable. You, you need to use the tests that are available in the uh, Open stack world, usually you use Tempest, you use your unit test, everything to, to be able to have a completely validated system. Uh, let me uh, finish. Yeah. Um, no, I will talk about uh, the methodology of the upgrade of uh, an open stack cluster. Uh, to do that, you have to consider what Sebastian has said before, uh, your architecture design to have uh, high availability. If uh, you need to uh, update to MySQL schema and uh, you need to do backup because uh, in production you always do backup. So uh, you need to have a configuration management tool and an enterprise protection tool. Uh, at Innovance, we use the Puppet uh, to only configure the, configure to the file on the system and uh, restart the services and not to install the package because it probably already does it. And uh, we use OSIP to orchestrate the upgrade process. I, uh, now I will describe uh, how in OpenStack you can, uh, uh, we, you will uh, do the process. This is an example of the dependency of uh, each uh, OpenStack uh, component uh, in the API point of view. Because uh, when you do upgrade, perhaps you need to upgrade the API version of uh, one of the components and the the OpenStack library that does uh, API compatibility is uh, Python, uh, whatever client, Python Nova client, Python Swift client, that allow you to use, uh, the, for example, the Keystone V1 API, uh, V1 API or the V2 API. And then you can make um, a dependency graph of um, which components need to communicate with, with uh, which other. And uh, when you have this, you can write this in your uh, Ansible recipe. Then you have the um, big picture of the progress. You need to see uh, how each node needs to be upgraded. The common process is uh, you, for um, component like Nova Happy, 
API is to remove the Nova API node from uh, your load balancer, upgrade it with the pry, start puppet that upgrades the configuration pi and restart the service, and then you can re-add the node to, the, to your load balancer. Some uh, component doesn't need that. Like uh, Nova Scheduler, you can just uh, start to deploy and uh, start Puppet, and everything uh, works fine. Your scheduler uh, can work with the new version. Uh, the same thing for your compute node. This is basically. But uh, sometimes you need to upgrade the schema of the database, and you cannot just do da that because many components share the database, and uh, uh, you need to stop your service, unfortunately. <laughs> To, to make the database upgrade. Uh, in the last summit, some uh, works have uh, been started to have a compatibility layer on, uh, on, uh, for the DB to have a component that can use the old version of the schema so you can upgrade all your open site cluster and then upgrade your schema, your, your schema after and uh, have a really short uh, interruption of your services. But it's not yet ready. Perhaps for IFOS, uh, the, the work will continue. So for now, you need to stop, for example, your Nova services. So you stop your Nova API, you stop your Nova scheduler, Nova compute, everything for Nova. And you need to do the previous process, but only for one compartment of Nova. You, you, you do the upgrade of Nova API, of Nova scheduler, Nova conductor, etc. And when you have a full chain ready, you can reopen your services on Nova, for example, and you can, after, we add other nodes to make your cluster uh, highly availability uh, like before. This is the way we are done the upgrade to minimize the uh, <coughs> the interruption of the service for each component. And uh, because everything is written in an uh, ansible receipt, we are no surprise. So, uh, someone from the, the summary? Um, well, just, just to summarize everything, uh, <clears throat> what you need to do and always need to do is just follow every best practices that we just put in place. Um, architecture matters also, so uh, depending on the design that you are going to choose, that might differ because what we expose there is a uh, load balance, well, a uh, high avail highly available setup, so if you have uh, some other architecture design, this might change your upgrade process. Um, automating everything is something that you definitely want to do, and you always obviously need to test everything, so everything goes through your uh, QA system. So that's, uh, that's basically everything for the upgrades. And uh, we would like to thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any questions, you can also reach us by email. So these are our details. And uh, if you have any questions. No questions. Uh, not actually. Uh, on your cluster, you will continue to use Nova networks, and then you can just stop Nova Compute, do the upgrade process, and so restart uh, your Nova Compute. You don't kill your Nova network, you just restart it after the upgrade has been node, and uh, it just flush your IP table and restore your IP table, and uh, you have a really short uh, network uh, cut, and the customer don't see that. So. Okay, thank you very much.